Join Kids Hat Family. What happened, Tofu? Why are you so sad? Tia, I am sad because I lost my bicycle last week. My friends enjoy the ride on their bicycles, but I can't. I wish they lose their bicycles too. Tofu, I never knew you will be so mean. You sound very selfish. You should stop this right away. Uh, Tia, Tia, sorry Tia, but I was really sad. I don't have one, but my friends do. I just feel left out. It's okay, Tofu. I can understand that you are sad. But wishing bad for others is not good. We should always think good for others. Come, I'll tell you a story about a fox who became a laughing stock amongst his friends just because he was very selfish. The fox without a tail. One day, a fox was walking in a forest. Suddenly, he heard a huge snap and in an immediate reaction, he jumped. But something awful happened to the poor little thing. He found his tail stuck in a trap and this gave a sharp pain in his rear. Ooh! Ah! That hurts so much! Oh! My tail is stuck in a trap! What would I do now? After battling for long with his tail and the trap, he gave a final try to it and with that came another snapping voice. Tears coming out of his eyes, the fox moaned. Oh, my tail, my tail! I lost my furry beautiful tail. What would I do now? I'll become laughing stock of my skulk now. This is so embarrassing. And he walked deeper into the forest with his head bowed down in sorrow. When suddenly an idea struck his mind, he decided to call a meeting of all his friends. you for a reason today. While walking through the forest, I kept wondering. We have eyes, nose, ears, teeth, legs, all for some reason. But why, why do we need a tail? It's a useless thing and keeps bothering us for some reason or the other. It either gets in way of our sitting or when kept outside is left for someone to trip over. So after a deep thought, I cut off my tail and want you to do the same. It feels great without that useless thing. The skulk of fox kept looking at the fox in amazement as to what he was saying. It's true. But nobody has really thought about them without the tail. It surely would be painful to do that. Meanwhile, a young agile fox jumped on to the higher place and addressed the skulk. Are you saying this because you no longer have a beautiful furry tail? Here you are just talking about your self-interest so that you don't get embarrassed and feel left out of the skulk. And the rest of the skulk went off laughing away and discussing as to how selfish and mean the fox is. In order to not feel embarrassed, he wants everyone to chop off their tail. 
idea. Now I understood. I shouldn't be selfish and not think bad for others. <laughs> Come, I'll buy you an ice cream, Tofu. wrong tofu i don't want to go to school today jim and jerry took all the tokens i had collected for the charity and submitted it as their own now they are going to win the appreciation sticker don't worry about it tofu sometimes it's okay to let go of things and just hold on to the joy they brought you i don't know tia do you know a nice story to help me believe Sure, I'll tell you a story. Once upon a time, a poor farmer was plowing his field. When he hit something hard, it was a large metal pot. What's this? A metal pot? I wonder if there is something more valuable underneath. In the hope that he could find something more valuable, the farmer dug deeper and wider. Tired after hours of searching, the farmer decided to rest. He left his spade in the pot. and lay down under the tree. A while later, when he got up and went back to the pot, he was surprised. How is this possible? The pot is full of hundreds of spades. I had left only one in it. Looks like this is a magical pot. Let me see what will happen if I put a mango in it. Just as the farmer had thought, the one mango turned into hundreds of mangoes when he left it in the pot. This is truly a magical pot. I will take it home and use it to tide over our troubles. The farmer went home and hid the pot at a safe place. He then went to the market and sold the mangoes. He earned a handsome sum for them. On the way back, he brought some grains. He went home and put each one of them in the pot one by one. enough of grains to last his family for the rest of the year. The farmer called his wife and told her everything that had happened. The 
This is a blessing. We should use it wisely to become rich but also keep it safely hidden. The farmer agreed with his wife. Over the year, he slowly started putting things in the pot. Fruits, vegetables, textiles. And in some years, he turned around his family's fortune. Though they had been secretive and very careful about their magic pot, people started noticing how they had become rich. And soon their secret was out. It even reached the king's ears. Such a powerful magical pot should be a part of the king's treasury. The farmer has no right to keep it. Only I have the right to own that pot. The king ordered the soldier to bring the pot to the palace. The soldier stormed into the farmer's home. and confiscated the pot. They brought it to the king. Let me see what is inside the pot that makes it so magical. Once I find what it is, I will become a hundred times more powerful. The king peered over the pot and looked into it. As he did, he lost his balance and fell into the pot. As he fell, he hit his head on the edge of the pot and became unconscious. When he woke up, he saw that there were hundreds of kings like him. They all fought each other to get to the throne and died. Soon the news reached the farmer and his wife. Should we get the pot back now? The king was foolish and his curiosity killed him. But it is not safe to keep the pot anymore. We have enough money and riches to take care of us and our many next generations. Let us leave the pot within the king's treasury. Oh, thank you, dear. That was indeed an inspiring story. And I feel much better now letting go of those tokens. Good to know that, Tofu. Now will you please finish your cereal so that we can go? <laughs> tofu, don't talk with your mouth full. It's okay, Tia. It's just you and me. I think the only way to get you eat quietly is to tell you a story. Hmm, yes, yes, Tia. Bad habits. Once upon a time, a rich businessman lived with his eight-year-old boy. Just as his wife had said, she the businessman loved his son, but hated that he had some bad habits. Worried about his son's behavior, the man went to a wise master. Oh, wise master! My son is a very good boy, but he has picked some unhealthy habits which I cannot get him to let go. I worry about him all the time. Please help me. Bring him to me tomorrow morning. The next morning, the man did as the master had said. He brought his boy to him. Come, son. Let's go for a walk. 
The boy obeyed and they went for a walk in the garden. As they walked, they came upon a little sapling. Son, pull out the sapling for me. The boy did that easily and presented the master with the sapling. Very well. Now you see that small plant? Pull that out for me. The boy did as asked and easily pulled the plant out. Next, the master asked him to pull out a bush. It took some effort, but the boy did that too. Now, see that small tree, son? Pull that out for me. The boy went to the small tree and though it took him a lot of effort and struggle, he pulled it out for the master. Very well done. Finally, look at that big tree over there. Pull that out too for me. The boy tried and tried, but the tree did not budge. Finally, tired, the boy gave up. I am sorry, wise master. I cannot pull that tree out. It is old and strong. Bad habits are just like the plants and trees. When they are new, like the sapling, you can get rid of them quickly and easily. But if you let them stay and grow, they grow strong and become like the old tree that cannot be removed. Forgive me, Master. I now understand what my father has been trying to tell me. I will drop all my bad habits from now on. Dear, what if talking with food in my mouth becomes my bad habit? Do? I will stop it right now. I will never talk with food in my mouth ever again. That's great. Thank you, Tofu. Aren't you going to your friend's party? No, Tofu. Mummy has asked me to stay home with you tonight because she and Papa will be returning home late. Oh no! I'm sorry, Tia. Because of me, you can't go to your party. It's okay, Tofu. Sometimes we have to sacrifice things for the ones we love. Just like the little mermaid. Little mermaid. Is it a story? Tell me, Tia, please. The Little Mermaid Once upon a time, there was a sea kingdom at the bottom of the sea. The king of the seas had six beautiful daughters who were mermaids. They were all very beautiful, but the youngest of them was the prettiest of them all. She had a gentle face, big round eyes and a voice sweeter than anyone else's in the world. When the little mermaid turned 15 years old, her grandmother 
called her to her room. Come, my darling. Today you have turned fifteen. And from now onwards, you can go to the world above. Just remember, the people above are very different from us. They do not have a beautiful fish tail like us. Instead, they have two legs. Thank you, Grandmother. I have waited for this day for so long. When I return, I will tell you about everything I see above. That night, the little mermaid went to the surface of the water. The sight of the stars and the cool breeze that touched her face took her breath away. She was just getting used to the feeling when she saw a big ship cross in front of her. Aboard it were many men and they were celebrating the birthday of the young prince who had just turned 16. The little mermaid was mesmerized with the handsome looks of the prince. She couldn't take her eyes off him as the ship sailed past her. She was so lost in him that she did not notice the storm build up in the sky and the sea begin to rage. The ship had only sailed a little further when the storm shook it up. The sailors tried to stir it to safety but many men including the prince fell into the sea. The little mermaid rushed to him and saved him from drowning. She took him ashore. Don't worry, you are safe. Open your eyes. But the prince lay unconscious. The mermaid decided to get help. When she couldn't get any, she came back to where the prince was. She saw him surrounded by many people. A beautiful princess was kneeling by him as others worked to awaken him. The prince opened his eyes and the little mermaid was relieved that her prince will be saved now. You saved my life. Thank you. The prince knew nothing about the little mermaid. He didn't even know that it was she who had actually saved his life. This broke the mermaid's heart. She went back to her father's home. She told her sisters and grandmother what had happened. Forget him, child. Humans and we are very different. To be with him forever, you will have to get him to love you more than anything else he loves in the world, even more than his own parents. How will that ever happen? Think about it. But the little mermaid could not forget the handsome prince. Every night she visited the spot where she had laid him after saving his life. One day she decided to visit the witch in her father's kingdom. 
Maybe she knew a way that the mermaid could be with the prince. Yes, there is a way. I can send you to the land above the sea. You will lose your fish tail and have legs. If by the second sunset you can get the prince to love you more than he loves his parents, then you can be with him forever. Otherwise, you will die and become foam in the sea. But in return, you must give me your voice. But without my voice, how will I make the prince fall in love with me? You still have your pretty face and eyes. You will also be the most beautiful dancer anyone has ever seen. Now go! In a flash, the mermaid found herself on the land. Her fish tail turned into human legs. It caused her pain, but she could not even scream because the witch had taken her voice away. Somehow, the mermaid made her way to the prince's castle. There was a big celebration going on there. But the guards would not let the mermaid enter because they didn't know who she was and she couldn't answer them when they asked her about it. So she was not allowed to enter. Somewhere in the castle, music started playing. Remembering what the witch had said about dancing, Little Mermaid started dancing. Oh, I have never seen anyone dance so beautifully. Maybe she has come to dance for the royal family in the celebrations. Oh, she is a dancer. Let me take her to the court. Once the mermaid reached the royal court, she saw that the celebration was for the wedding of the prince. Little mermaid was heartbroken. She thought the only way of meeting the prince now would be to dance and draw his attention towards her. And so she performed a beautiful dance for the royal family. When the prince saw her, he came up to her. Hello young lady, I have seen you in my dreams. Who are you? In his heart, the prince hoped that she would be the one who had saved him from drowning. He longed to hear the voice that had saved him when he was dying. But no sound came out when the little mermaid tried to reply. Forgive me, I think I am confused between you and someone else. But please do join us. The prince led her to the ship on which the wedding was going to take place. Many people spoke to her but she could not answer anyone. The princess was especially kind to her 
and took special care of her. I know you saved the prince that day. Thank you, because of you, I have found the love of my life. Please, always stay with us. The little mermaid saw that the princess and the prince loved each other and were very happy together. She decided not to pursue the prince anymore. He belonged to another woman. Although her heart ached to let him go, she happily attended the wedding and all the celebrations that went on throughout the next day. Soon it was evening. The second sunset was about to happen. The little mermaid knew she would die and become foam on the sea. As she stood there, looking at the prince and his princess, she heard some voices behind her. She turned around to see. Her sisters were there in the water. But all of them had very short hair now, instead of the long flowing locks they used to have earlier. Sisters, what are you doing here? We have come to save you. We went to the witch. In exchange of her hair, she gave us this knife. If you stab the prince through his heart before sunset, you can be saved. Handing the knife to the youngest sister, all the other sisters vanished under the water once again. The little mermaid stood there holding the knife to her heart. She looked at the newlyweds once again. She knew what she had to do. At the sunset, she tossed the knife into the sea. Goodbye, my love. And so, for the happiness of her beloved prince, the little mermaid sacrificed her own life and joined the sea as foam. Tia, this is such a beautiful story. It shows how much the little mermaid loved the prince. Thank you for not going to the party and staying with me. That's because I love you, my little brother. I love you too, my darling sister, Tia. These cookies are so yum. I can eat them forever. Tofu, have you ever imagined what if these cookies become alive? Alive? Hmm, this reminds me of a story. The Gingerbread Man Long ago, there lived an old couple. One day, the old woman cooked a gingerbread cookie in the shape of a man. As soon as the gingerbread man was cooked, He jumped out of the tin and ran out of the open window, shouting, Don't eat me! He ran away as fast as he could. The old couple tried to chase the gingerbread man, but he was too fast for them. 
Soon, a hungry pig saw the gingerbread man and said, Stop! I would like to eat you! He too joined the chase. The gingerbread man was too fast and said, You can't catch me. I am the gingerbread man. A little further, a hungry cow saw the gingerbread man and said, Stop! I would like to eat you! She too joined the chase. You can't catch me! I'm the gingerbread man! Next, he met a horse. The horse too joined the chase. Finally, the gingerbread man came to a river and stopped as the river could make him soggy. A clever fox came by and wanted to eat him up. But he pretended to be nice and offered help to the gingerbread man. He asked the gingerbread man to climb on his head so that he could take him across the river. The gingerbread man was so scared of water that he agreed. As soon as they reached the other side, the fox tossed up the gingerbread man in the air. He opened his mouth and ate him up. That was the end of the gingerbread man. <laughs> I don't want my cookies alive and get eaten by a wolf. <laughs> Enjoy your cookies, Tofu. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.